After Forrest said goodbye to his team, the Academy competition also kicked off. There will be ten matches happening at all times to speed everything up, but Mr. Luo was scanning the place and couldn't spot Forrest anywhere. The guy already missed the written exam, and if he doesn't make it to this competition, he might get expelled. He was doing the math in his head, thinking that by now the Federation soldiers should have returned. Then a darker thought crossed his mind, but he quickly shook that off. Nope, Forrest's definitely coming back in one piece. Meanwhile, Chubb standing next to him was sweating bullets. He hadn't seen Forrest in a month and was hoping the teacher could spill the beans on where Forrest had gone. Mr. Luo simply told him to wait and didn't give him any real answers. By now, the competition had already started, and students were getting knocked off the stage left and right. One of the winners is Tommy, and he didn't just win. Instead, he absolutely crushed his opponent, who happened to be ranked 98th on the power ranking. Everyone was buzzing, talking about how Tommy had just returned from the road of death, a place where it's basically a miracle if a person comes back alive. No wonder the guy had such a strong, bloody aura around him. Right then, the referee called out Forrest's name. Both Chubb and Mr. Luo were getting pretty anxious. The referee called Forrest again, but still, no sign of him. His opponent, a short-haired guy named Gunner, had been hoping to fight Forrest on stage, who he knew defeated Tommy, but now it looked like Forrest didn't even have the guts to show up. The referee was starting to get a bit fed up too and announced a 10-second countdown. If Forrest didn't show up, he'd automatically disqualify. Suddenly, a voice rang out telling him there was no need to count. And out of nowhere, Forrest leaped onto the stage. The crowd went wild, shouting his name. Meanwhile, Mr. Luo was super relieved, thinking finally that kid made it just in time. Chubb chuckled too, saying, Classic Forrest, always showing up fashionably late, just to show off. At the same time, they could tell that Forrest had gotten even stronger. Tommy, fresh off his win, also noticed Forrest and was surprised he didn't die at the Light Fortress. He sneered, thinking it was great. Now he'd get to kill Forrest himself. But come on, do you really think that's going to happen? The referee glanced at both Forrest and Gunner, then tells them to get ready. Gunner couldn't help himself and asked if he was Forrest. The bottom of the class loser? And there we go, more trash talking. Forrest didn't even get mad. Instead, he pointed out that Gunner was barely ranked in the top 100, which is lower than Forrest, so there wasn't much to brag about. To make things worse, Forrest threw up his pinky finger, and Gunner's eyelid twitched in anger. And just like that, the referee announced, Let the match begin! Gunner made the first move, swinging his weapon down at Forrest with all his might, but after a month of training at the Light Fortress, Forrest had leveled up big time. He didn't even bother pulling out his own weapon, he just casually caught Gunner's attack with his bare hand. Gunner couldn't believe his eyes, and before he knew it, Forrest had sent him flying with a swift kick. He skidded across the ground for a few meters, wiped the blood from the corner of his mouth, and still had the nerve to act tough, saying, that's just a minor trick. The next second, Gunner busted out his bronze level technique, sending a fiery strike toward Forrest. But of course, Forrest dodged it with ease. Seizing the moment, Forrest countered with his splintering fist. He barely managed to block it with his weapon, but even then, he was sent stumbling back, his hands aching from the force. He couldn't believe how hard Forrest's punches were. So, he went all out, unleashing his silver level technique and putting every ounce of his strength into the attack. The crowd started to buzz. Everyone recognized this signature move of Gunner's. They were impressed that Forrest had pushed him to use such a technique so soon in the match. But here's the thing. Forrest still hadn't drawn his weapon. Some spectators started whispering that maybe Forrest was getting a little too cocky. Forrest, on the other hand, wasn't worried. To him, Gunner's moves were nothing but flashy nonsense. And that last attack? It had maxed out Forrest's rage gauge. Plus, with only one or two fights in a day, he didn't need to worry about cooldowns. With that thought, Forrest went in for another splintering fist, this time powered up with a charged strike. Gunner's attack came down, but in the next second, he knew he was in trouble. Forrest's attack was way too strong. Gunner went down hard, and this time, he wasn't getting back up. The referee stepped in, and announced the result. Forrest wins. Chubb was jumping up and down. Meanwhile, Mr. Luo was absolutely shocked. Forrest had just taken down Gunner, who was ranked 150th, just with his bare hands. Other students started gathering around, welcoming Forrest back like some kind of hero, and they couldn't help but say that maybe Forrest should keep things a little low-key, 
not just crush someone the moment he comes back, but Chubb, loyal as ever piped up as he believed young guys should be a bit wild. What's the point of holding back? Still, he was dying to know where Forrest had been for the last month and why he didn't bring him along while acting all offended. Forrest laughed and replied the place he went was super dangerous. If he took Chubb along, he'd just be a liability which will get both of them killed. The two of them started playfully shoving each other as if that intense battle hadn't even phased Forrest, which caused the rest of the students to burst out laughing. Finally, Forrest got a chance to rest. Since waking up on the aircraft, he hadn't had a moment to check his stats. He quickly realized he'd leveled up to 15, and the system hit him with a bunch of notifications. He had another lottery spin and a brand new skill called camouflage. His overall combat power had shot up to 1,249, still a first-tier martial artist. Curious, Forrest checked out the details of camouflage. Turns out, the skill would let him hide his aura, blending in like a regular person. Only someone two tiers higher than him would be able to see through it. Pretty slick, right? But what really got him pumped was unlocking the gene lock after hitting level 15. A ton of info flooded his mind, leaving him a bit dazed, but he quickly snapped out of it. Skills were great and all, but it's the gene lock that he really cared about. Forrest took a look at the details, and the system hit him with some bad news. Unlocking the first tier gene lock came with a 10% chance of death, a 20% chance of passing out, and a 30% chance of who knows what. And yes, that's exactly what the system told him. Forrest immediately cursed under his breath. Seriously? There's a 10% chance he could die? That's messed up. Dude isn't gambling with his life right now, so he swore at the system again, then dumped all 15 of his potential points into strength instead. Just then, it was Forrest's turn to fight again. Chubb gave him a tap on the shoulder and wished him luck. Meanwhile, the Academy's Dean, Smith, wasn't looking too happy. Forrest had just won another match with ease. Smith was the one who'd sent Forrest to the Light Fortress in the first place. But not only did Forrest come back alive, he was stronger than ever. Now Smith had no idea how to explain this to the Stryker family. Then an idea hit him. He glanced at the staff handling the matchups and thought, what if he gave Forrest the strongest opponent? Make sure he doesn't walk off the stage. A cold smirk appeared on his face, believing that Forrest should have never messed with the Stryker family to start with. Sometime later, a new matchup list was posted. The Academy's big competition had already eliminated most of the students, and now it was down to the top 100. Chubb was hoping Forrest would get an easy opponent so he could breeze through, but Forrest wasn't feeling too optimistic. And then, the matchups were announced. Forrest's next opponent? A guy named Ashton. Meanwhile, Fitz was set to fight, Tommy. Everyone froze for a second, realizing things were about to get serious. Forrest didn't recognize this guy named Ashton at first. Chubb, on the other hand, was freaking out, saying how did Forrest end up against this dude in his first match? Turns out, Ashton was ranked fourth in the power rankings. Word around the academy was that he regularly trained in dangerous areas full of zombies and mutated beasts. And to top it off, the guy had a reputation for being ruthless. Meanwhile, Fitz was having his own crisis since he was set to face Tommy. He had heard all about Tommy's return from the road of death and knew the guy had long since broken through to the first tier. Mr. Luo tried to comfort him and wished them both luck. Over at the Academy's high council area, a group of people stood up when they noticed an elderly man walk in. The old man smiled kindly, and the principal quickly invited him to sit. He introduced the man who had come to check out the Academy students. The principal then asked Smith to bring over the profiles of the best students, but the old man dismissed him, saying, there was no rush for that since he was more interested in watching the matches. Soon enough, it was time for Fitz and Tommy's fight. Tommy recognized Fitz as being from Forrest's class and shot him a cold look. Fitz was tense. He knew Tommy was strong, but there was no way he was going to give up without a fight. Tommy, however, just sneered and said, Anyone from Forrest's class, he's gonna kill them all. Fitz frowned, gripping his weapon and charged in with all his strength. But Tommy easily dodged the attack and grabbed Fitz's arm, snapping it with a brutal twist. Fitz's weapon clattered to the ground, and he let out a cry of pain. Tommy wasn't done yet. He grabbed his other arm and grinned, saying he was going to break all four of his limbs. Suddenly, someone shouted for him to stop. In the next second, Forrest came rushing in. Without thinking, Tommy threw a punch and Forrest met it with one of his own. Their fists collided with equal force, neither one coming out on top. Forrest glared at him and told him that if he had a problem, come at him, don't hurt his classmates. Tommy pulled back his fist and sneered at Forrest, promising that when the time came, 
he'd break all of Forrest's limbs too, letting him suffer before finally finishing him off. Forrest, thinking back to those two assassins he encountered at the Light Fortress, Forrest is not going to let the Stryker family get away easily. Right then, the referee stormed over and questioned Forrest which class he was from and how dare he interrupt a match. Forrest, still glaring coldly at Tommy, shot back, saying as a teacher, how could he just stand there and let a student nearly get beaten to death on the stage? The intensity of Forrest's gaze sent a shiver down the referee's spine, making him flinch. Gulping nervously, he muttered some excuse about Fitz not officially surrendering, but after thinking it over, he quickly told Forrest to take Fitz down for treatment. The school medic team rushed over and the doctor waved at Forrest, signaling for him to hurry up and bring Fitz over. As Forrest helped Fitz off the stage, the referee announced Tommy's victory. While the doctor checked Fitz's injuries, Forrest asked, Where has she been lately? He hasn't seen her around these past few days. The doctor looked up with a playful smirk and teasingly asked, Ah, oh, did you miss me? She chuckled and then explained, Now that the tournament's down to the top 100, the fights are getting pretty brutal. She came down to keep an eye on Forrest, just in case. Meanwhile, Fitz, still lying on the stretcher, raised his hand while saying he let everyone down tears in his eyes. He was so upset that he couldn't even take a single hit. He turned to Forrest, begging him to be careful. In return, Forrest reassured him. After a few more matches, it was finally time for Forrest's showdown with Ashton. Forrest pulled out his spear and with cheers from the crowd, walked onto the stage. Over on the sidelines, Smith was practically rubbing his hands in anticipation, eager to see Forrest dead. He gave Ashton a nod, and Ashton nodded back like they had some unspoken agreement. Ashton was a big guy, wielding a massive hammer that looked like it could crush a building. As Forrest stepped onto the platform, Ashton glanced over and asked if he was the famous Forrest everyone was talking about. Forrest didn't respond. He just activated his eye of analysis, scanning his opponent's stats. Ashton was a second tier with a combat power of 1,847. Even though he was only second tier, his overall power was close to the third-tier assassin back in Light Fortress. No wonder he was ranked fourth on the leaderboard. The referee soon signaled both to get ready, and shortly after match began, Ashton wasted no time charging in with his massive hammer and swinging it down toward Forrest with a thundering crash. The impact shattered the stage floor, and Forrest was genuinely surprised. This platform was made from some kind of special stone as hard as steel, and Ashton had just put a crater in it with one hit. Ashton chuckled and said Forrest is pretty quick, but he believes no matter how fast he is, he's going to crush Forrest's skull. He licked his lips and added that Forrest won't even feel the pain. The crowd, of course, was loving it. Even the commentator was getting fired up, saying, What a monstrous swing from Ashton. Can Forrest possibly withstand the next attack? Some students in the stands were already predicting Forrest's defeat, convinced he was going to lose. Their comments didn't sit well with the doctor or Chubb, who glared at the loudmouths and told them to shut up and watch the fight. Still, the doubters kept running their mouths, even going so far as to say, if Forrest somehow wins this, he will take a solid bite off the stage. The doctor, fully confident in Forrest, smirked and told the doubters that she would be waiting for that live stream of them eating the platform. Meanwhile, on stage, Ashton wasn't wasting any time. He leaped into the air, bringing his massive hammer down toward Forrest again. Forrest dodged in the nick of time, quickly circling to Ashton's side and going in for a strike. But Ashton was quick too, countering with a powerful swing of his hammer. Feeling the force of Ashton's strength, Forrest started thinking about using his explosive anger. But with its long cooldown and the fact that the tournament had just begun, he knew he needed to keep it as his trump card for later. Ashton, seeing Forrest's hesitation, sneered, saying, If that's all Forrest got, he might as well give up and die. With that, he charged again. This time, Forrest unleashed his wrathful rainstorm. Suddenly, the confident Ashton felt a wave of danger. He instinctively tried to block with his hammer, but Forrest's speed was too much for him. Ashton couldn't stop the last strike, and Forrest's spear pierced his shoulder, forcing him to stumble back a few steps. The guys who'd promised to eat the platform were in shock. They couldn't believe Ashton had actually been hit. People around them started teasing, however. The guy just tells them to not celebrate just yet. Ashton hasn't even gotten serious. Back on the platform, Ashton chuckled, clearly a bit surprised but also amused, saying Forrest is much more interesting than he thought. Then, with a grin, he decided it was time to turn things up a notch. In the next moment, 
Ashton gathered all his strength into his hands. His muscles began to swell, the power flowing from his arms to his body and then into his hammer. Forrest could feel the intensity of Ashton's source energy building up. Then, with a sudden burst of power, Ashton unleashed his technique, mountain-crushing blow. One second, Ashton was on the ground, and the next, he was in the air, his giant hammer crashing down toward Forrest with terrifying force. The sheer pressure from his energy was enough to make Forrest surprised. There was no time to dodge, and Forrest knew it. If he couldn't dodge, then he'd have to face it head on. Forrest countered by unleashing the wings of a hundred birds combined with a wrathful rainstorm. The moment he executed the move, everyone was stunned, especially the academy higher-ups. A few people recognized it immediately as a fusion of two techniques, something rare and difficult to pull off. Even the old man watching from the sidelines raised an eyebrow. With a deafening crash, Ashton's giant hammer collided with the spear. Both were thrown back several meters. Forrest took a bit of damage from that exchange, but it wasn't enough to stop him. As for Ashton, he seemed even more fired up. He hadn't felt this kind of thrill in a long time. Suddenly, a tiger materialized above Ashton's head. Grinning wickedly, he said, As a reward, he will make sure to smash Forrest's skull and give him a quick death. Forrest hadn't expected the guy to be able to use another technique so quickly. With energy building up again, Ashton attacked again. The crowd gasped as the massive tiger claw surged toward Forrest. The stage-eating guy laughed loudly, declaring, That's Ashton's signature move, and he believed that Forrest's finished while Chubb began shouting for Forrest to jump off the stage and escape. In the blink of an eye, Ashton's attack slammed into Forrest. For a moment, it seemed like it was over. Dust and debris covered the stage, and two people in the audience were already grinning, convinced Forrest was done for. Even the school doctor began praying for Forrest. But as the dust began to settle, Forrest calmly dusted off his clothes and said with a smirk, Phew, that was close. Turned out, that he used his explosive anger just in time to block the attack. Ashton stood there in shock, unable to believe what he was seeing. Forrest, lifting himself off the ground, tells Ashton that sorry to disappoint him, but his warm-up is officially over. Time for his turn. Seeing Forrest charge at him again, Ashton thought Forrest was just repeating the same move from before, but in the next second, they both unleashed their techniques at the same time. Something was off this time, though. Ashton could feel it. Forrest's power and speed had suddenly skyrocketed. How the hell did he get so strong all of a sudden? Ashton glanced at his hammer, noticing a dent in it, and clenched his teeth. He wasn't about to give up, so he swung his hammer and rushed in again. The clash of their weapons echoed across the arena. The crowd was stunned, jaws dropping at the scene. Chubb started to worry, saying, Forrest's getting sucked into Ashton's rhythm. This isn't looking good. But the school doctor calmly replied, Ashton's about to lose. Up on the stage, Ashton was starting to realize that he couldn't keep up with Forrest anymore. He refused to believe it. Desperation crept in as his energy ran low, but he didn't care anymore. Like a madman, he launched another technique, determined to take Forrest down. Forrest, on the other hand, could see that Ashton was running on fumes. His own rage gauge was fully charged, and this time, he wasn't holding back. With a charged strike, Forrest broke through Ashton's defense. His spear stopped just a few millimeters from Ashton's neck. Then, he tells Ashton that he has lost. Chubb jumped up, cheering. Forrest actually beat Ashton, the fourth on the leaderboard. The doctor couldn't resist taunting the two doubters from earlier, wondering how they plan on eating the stage. Raw or steamed? The two turned pale, exchanged awkward glances, and slipped away as quickly as they could. Meanwhile, Smith was sweating bullets. He couldn't believe Ashton had lost. As the referee announced Forrest's victory, the crowd erupted in cheers. But Ashton, glaring at Forrest's back, wasn't done yet. His eyes filled with murderous intent. When no one was watching, he pulled a small round object from his pocket and hurled it toward Forrest. At that moment, someone shouted, That's a microbomb! Get out of there! Forrest turned, but it was too late. The bomb was already on its way. Just when it seemed like Forrest was done for, a shadow streaked across the arena. There was a massive explosion, and the shockwave sent Ashton flying. As the dust settled, the crowd gasped. The stage had completely collapsed, but there, standing amidst the rubble, was Forrest, surrounded by a protective shield, and in front of him stood an old man. Forrest immediately recognized the advanced energy technique, known as the circle, which only martial artists at the sixth tier or higher could use to externalize their energy and form a shield. 
Realizing that the elder in front of him must be incredibly powerful, Forrest quickly thanked him. The elder patted Forrest on the shoulder and tells him to keep working hard, and he got his eye on Forrest. Then, turning to Ashton, he added, It's fine to want to win, but using such dirty tricks, that's uncalled for. At that moment, the principal rushed over with other academy staff in tow, looking nervous. The elder wasn't pleased and asked him if this was the excellent student they recommended. The principal, practically groveling, apologized profusely, promising that a student with such poor character would be severely dealt with. As Forrest watched the principal nodding and bowing like a lackey, he knew the elder must have had a powerful background. Just then, the doctor hurried over to check on Forrest, poking and prodding him as if he were seriously injured. Forrest jumped back, startled, insisted that he was fine. Mr. Luo approached and told Forrest that all the matches for the morning were paused, so he should get his wounds treated, then take a break. Then he can come back for the afternoon rounds. Forrest nodded, though he wanted to know who that old man was. Mr. Luo shook his head, admitting that he didn't know either, but guessed that the elder was probably an instructor from one of the five great academies, here to assess the students. For Forrest muttered to himself, wondering when he could become this powerful too. Back in his dorm, Forrest decided it was time for his lottery spin. Reaching level 15 had earned him one spin, and since he got one spin per month, he now had two chances. With his fingers crossed, he activated the system and watched the wheel spin. It finally stopped on a technique card, but it was a sword technique. Great, he thought sarcastically. But then the system chimed in, announcing, Excess technique card detected. Synthesis system activated. Forrest was momentarily stunned, but quickly realized that he could combine three techniques of the same tier to create a new one. Wait, hold on. Doesn't that sound like a ripoff? Three cards just to get one? Anyway, he jumped into his second lottery spin. As the wheel spun, he prayed for the grand prize. This time, the system actually delivered. It was the grand prize. A technique card pack. Excited, Forrest opened the pack, revealing two new technique cards. One for a sword technique and another for a spear technique. He eagerly read through the spear skill, but after a closer look, he realized it wasn't much different from his charged strike. Both relied on agility and strength for a powerful finishing blow, and it wasn't even faster than his wrathful rainstorm. Still, with a few combat cards in hand, he figured it was the perfect chance to try out the new synthesis system. He threw three cards into the system's fusion slot, selected the type of spear technique he wanted, and hit confirm. The system whirred to life, and in the next moment, it gave him a new technique called Endgame. Just from the name, Forrest knew it had to be awesome. Excited, he quickly began learning it. Turned out, Endgame allowed him to reflect an opponent's attack right back at them, with the power of the counter based on the strength of the enemy attack. However, it came with a hefty energy cost, and required precise timing. And of course, it wouldn't work if the opponent's level was too high. But still, Forrest knew this new skill could be a game-changer. Before long, it was time for the afternoon matches. Forrest's next opponent? A girl. She eyed him curiously, while Forrest, caught off guard, gave a sheepish smile. How was he supposed to fight a girl? The match began, and the next second, the girl had already looped her weapon around Forrest, catching him off guard. Before he could even react, she leaned in close and whispered, There's no escaping now. Then, to his absolute shock, she pulled him in and kissed him right on the cheek. Still stunned, Forrest didn't know what to do. But before he could process what had just happened, the girl turned to the referee and shouted that she had forfeited, saying she can't fight her idol. Forrest, the audience, and even the referee were left frozen for a moment. After what felt like several seconds, the referee finally announced, Forrest wins! Chubb couldn't help but ask Mr. Luo with a pout, why doesn't he get this kind of luck? Meanwhile, the doctor was fuming that someone would seduce Forrest right in front of her. As Forrest walked off the stage, Chubb gave him a mischievous grin and asked, so, how was it, huh? Forrest just shook his head, half amused, half exasperated. But before he could even respond, someone grabbed his collar. In a flash, the doctor yanked him over and without warning planted one right on the lip. Forrest jumped back covering his mouth in shock. The doctor casually wiped her own lips and said, A kiss on the cheek? Pfft, that's nothing. This is how you do it. She smirked, adding that she just took Forrest's first kiss. Forrest, nearly in tears, wailed, saying that's his first kiss. The doctor, clearly enjoying the moment, patted his head and teased, Don't worry, I'll take responsibility for it. Meanwhile, the tournament continued, and the next round was coming up, the 25-12 to 12 match. Because there was an odd number of contestants, 
One group was set for a three-person elimination, meaning it would be a three-in-one battle. Unfortunately for Forrest, thanks to Smith's meddling behind the scenes, he got stuck in that unlucky group. Mr. Luo sighed, pointing out that Forrest's opponents were ranked 10th and 12th. Worse yet, the two of them were good friends, so it was likely to turn into a two-on-one situation. Forrest rubbed his temples, but he wasn't too worried. If their strength wasn't on par with Ashton's, he figured he could handle them, especially with his new technique. Soon enough, it was time for their match. And just as Mr. Luo predicted, the two teamed up immediately, both charging at Forrest. One came at him from the front, while the other tried to flank him from the side. But Forrest was quick on his feet. He countered, knocking the first guy away with a clean hit, and then swiftly dodging the second sneak attack. Forrest wasn't about to just sit back and take it. He launched a swift counterattack, aiming his wings of a hundred birds at one of his opponents. But to his surprise, the guy wasn't some easy target. In a blink, the opponent launched a counter of his own, and to Forrest's shock, he actually managed to break through the wings of a hundred birds.